I'll say a bit more about uh, the Education Exeter Festival when I when I find out a bit more about it. Regular listeners will know we do we do go on about student accommodation because that's how the university is evident to people who just live in Exeter. I think um, pubs get demolished, new blocks go up. Uh, people notice this sort of thing and last week in the Echo I think it was last week there's there's a consultation going on and um, it's about planning permission zones for houses to be rented or allowed to be rented and um, it goes back to the the plan there was a, another consultation about a, a draft plan which I think is going to be repeated uh, in the autumn. Um, but what what I noticed was that the, they didn't show... They showed where the new buildings are going to be for housing, but they didn't show, in the one I saw anyway, the Harlequins or the police station replaced by student accommodation. And my, ov- my overall question is... Um, whether the university is going to supply any numbers, what they expect the student population to be over five, ten, or twenty years, um, which apparently will be in a version of the plan, the extra council plan, at some point. Um, but I did, I did look at the documents available for this consultation on um, the zoning proposals, um, but it's very, it's very incomplete about num- student numbers it just explains what's going on at the moment and maybe another year or two ahead and it just seems to me if, if there's investment in accommodation of various kinds there has to be some sort of idea of what's likely to happen over the lifetime of the building which could be 30 40 years um, so is is learning moving online and what sort of hybrid model is most likely to to exist um, and what what policy does the university have or other universities have about it um, because uh, things did change during lockdown but maybe it's all gone back to normal uh, the student experience is now exactly the same as it was five ten twenty years ago that's one impression you might get. Um, so, to maintain that, a, a Russell Group university in the UK can expand the scope of who they might accept more or less indefinitely to make the numbers they first thought of. Uh, but will they? What What do they actually think they're going to do? Uh, because another way of thinking about it is that some sort of hybrid model would only require a certain number of students to be on the campus 30%, 40% of the year they could be somewhere else or there could be a lot of online offers that are quite independent of location but nobody knows what the what the policy might be I I don't think they do Um, so that's that's what I would have said until I discovered about the uh, EduX Festival. I'm just putting it that way because that's the Twitter handle. You can find that more more about it. And through that, I discovered that there there is a digital strategy for 2030, just as there is a a, a strategy. But the strategy um, it sort of mentions digital, but it's not. It doesn't doesn't say how that affects where they invest in building or platforms or or anything else or what their numbers are that they are anticipating but as I, as I said I do think at some point they should make a statement to Exeter Council what what their intention is over five or ten years in in terms of numbers uh, near Exeter uh, FutureLearn and Peter Horrocks, the Open University, 
it's just another um for new listeners just going through this again but i have raved on about this quite 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 a lot before um peter horrocks was vice chancellor of the open university and uh he he did a lecture in durham about the fortress university and i listened to that recently again and it's it, very interesting it, it has quite a lot about artificial intelligence the implications of that and also about fortress journalism because um, he used to work for the world service bbc world service and he's got a lot of things about what what has happened with journalism and what might happen with education but this was a few years ago so you can see a lot of what he was saying ma makes makes quite a lot of sense and um strangely durham university have now made it unlisted it, ne it never got many views partly because they didn't use the same words in the title that people might be searching for so fortress university is an interesting concept and i'm i'm trying to do a play about that um or a location about it a situation and i'll, I'll say more about that on the drama show tomorrow um but the the economics of it are interesting because since he had to resign as um vice chancellor of the open university um seek group which is a recruitment group based in australia who also invest in coursera uh, they put 50 million into Future Learn, and then uh, sort of main main events to to you, which is a a, a USA. Um, what's what, what Ed Ed Tech an Ed Tech operation? Let's say um, they bought um, EdX from uh, Harvard University and MIT for 800 million dollars so it's not a unicorn but it's, it was all in cash so it's quite a significant event um, but this was during the lockdown and the, lo the lockdown is very interesting because attitudes towards online um, changed and uh, now the, the valuation of 2U is a lot less than was paid for edX. John's back. I'm going to stop raving on it's quite so much. John, I've gone into a rave, okay. uh, but jo John, John's back, so we might might go back to some, some music shortly. Um, just two two bits of newspaper of, uh, this, that I've come across. M the, the Metro... Uni's told get out of the migration business. So what's that about? It may be it may be to get out of the migration business. Going online would make a lot of sense. And then um, Sunday Times, May twenty first, cash crisis sparks chaos on campus. This is more about the University of East Anglia. Right. But no Norwich and Exeter are not very different, essentially. So it's could, could, that could be interesting. 